Hello aspirants, I'm back with at another learning session and the topic for this session is callous culture. Before we move on, I would request you to hit like button and subscribe Times of Biotech if you are new to the channel. Let's see what we are going to cover today. So first of all, we are going to see what is callus, principle and procedure of callus culture and what exactly a callus looks like after a culturing that is morphology, texture and coloration of it. Application of the callus, how can we forget about that? So what is callus? A callus is an undifferentiated mass of cells which is formed on the surface of plant injury. Differentiated mass means it means that it is an aggregate of cells whose fate is not defined, meaning what exactly it's going to be, whether it is going to differentiate into leaf, whether it is going to differentiate into stem or root is not defined at. You can induce the callus to form any of the structures of the plant. What is the principle of callus culturing? The callus culture for the callus culturing, you need to see that you have a aseptic preparations. Meaning if you see, if you are choosing an explant, for example, a leaf, a leaf ha will have a different type of bacteria on its surface. The root will have a different type of bacteria on its surface. So we don't want that bacteria to grow into our culture medium. We just want to induce a callus. So we have to make sure that all these bacteria, the funguses, contaminants are removed. So for that matter, we have to choose a aseptic preparation. We need to surface sterilize the explant, sterilize the environment, sterilize the equipment, what we are going to use. Next factor, what we need to take care is the selection of suitable nutrient media. We need to take care for the induction of callus, what is the ratio of auxin and cytokines is required whether it requires a cytokine or it can only form a callus with the help of a 2,4-D, which is analog of auxin. What kind of media we need to use? Generally, MS media is used, but if you are looking for a specialized kind of callus, you need to use other type of nutrients and media as well. So all these factors we need to consider when we are doing a callus culture. Next, we need to take care that what kind of environment we are giving to callus culture. For instance, a callus can be grown into dark session or it requires 16 hours of day period and 8 hours of dark period. It will depend on a kind of a callus you are looking for. You are aiming for from which part of the plant you are trying to induce the callus. So all the characteristics will differentiate the callus and it will depend upon the kind of callus and the from explant you are trying to induce the callus. The procedure of the callus. Culture. First and foremost thing we need to do is select the explant. This explant can be any part or any plant as per your requirement. Here we have used a fresh taproot of carrot which is rinsed off with the water thoroughly to remove all the surface debris, followed to which the taproot is then dipped into 5% tea pol for 10 minutes. Mind you, you have to perform all the steps in the laminar airflow in aseptic conditions. Even the scalpels, what you are using for the procedure, you have to dip it into 70% ethanol and flame it before every use. Coming back to the procedure, once you have cut, you have to use a scalpel and cut a transverse section of the tap root, which will be 1 mm in thickness. Transfer all the transverse sections into the water for rinsing and next you can dip it into sodium hypochlorite solution. This sodium hypochlorite solution acts as a chemical sterilant and this will sterilize the explant completely removing all the traces of bacteria or any kind of contaminants. Next step you have to do is you have to remove the traces of sodium hypochlorite because we don't want any chemicals to be present on our explant when we are transferring it into a culture media. So for that matter, you need to rinse it 
completely with the double distilled water. So once you are done with this particular step, transfer the uh, transfer sections into the Petri dish and you have to perform the most important step over here, meaning cutting the section which you are going to transfer on the media. Now, this particular section has to be around half of the section should be above the cambrium ring and half of the section has to be below the cambrium ring, meaning you are taking the section of phloem, cambrium and xylem. Next, you have to transfer this uh, cut explant onto the culture media. This culture media can be any of your choice as per the requirement of the cal callus induction or it can be a minimum media that is MS media with 0.5 mg per liter concentration of 2,4-D which is a analog of oxy. So once you are done with it, you have to incubate into a proper environment as per the requirement. And after four weeks, you will see that your callus formation is taking place. Now we have our callus with us, but what exactly lead to the formation of callus? The callus is the outcome of cell expansion and cell division. Under the influence of exogenous hormones, the explant loses its characteristics. And for, by the series of cell ex expansion and cell division, our aggregated mass of self get formed. Now, this particular step is irreversible. You cannot get an explant from the uh, callus, but you can, in fact, regenerate the whole plant. Now, see, let's see what exactly callus looks like. We have seen the callus is an amorphous mass of cell which has no regular shape. It can range from small cells to elongated large cells. The elongated large cells have the large vacuole and they are generally non-dividing kind of cells. But the small cells which has a smaller, comparatively smaller vacuole and a larger portion of cytoplasm are the dividing ones. You can differentiate a callus based on the texture. Soft callus are loosely formed, soft, softer ones, whereas the hard callus is compactly packed kind of a callus. Now, depending upon the coloration, you can also differentiate the callus. Before we go ahead, let me tell you one thing that each callus formed from any part of the plant any plant looks alike. Generally, they are uh, yellow or creamish in color, but depending upon the pigmentation it contains, the color may vary. For instance, you can see that the green callus over here on the screen is due to the presence of chloroplastid in the cells. A callus can may attain a white in coloration when it is grown in dark, but when it is a uh, uh, like transfer into the light, it may again become a green in color due to the accumulation of chloroplastid. It can be orange to yellow in color depending upon the level of carotenoid pigment. Purple in color due to the presence of anthocyanin and whereas brown in color when it has excreted phenolic substances. Habituation is another type of uh, pheno another phenomena which is seen into the callus. This phenomena means once you have grown a callus for a longer period of time, it may happen that it no longer requires a suppl supplementation of hormones. It can grow on its own. The reason behind it is if after a prolonged culturing, the callus have attained an ability to uh, a callus have attained an ability to produce hormones of its own. This could be a possible reason, but exact reason behind the habituation of callus is unknown. Now the application. There are many applications, For a few of them are plant regeneration as we have been discussing so far. The aim of the callus culturing is to get the whole plant out of it. 
this is done particularly for those uh, plants who's who does not perform uh, who does not actually have a viable seeds for example orchids we can generate a, a entire orchid plant using this callus culture genetic and karyotypic variability if you see the when we are doing a callus culturing we see a lot of genetic variation into the callus from the actual x plant this happens due to uh, in course of uh, course of time when we do the lot of subculturing so this particular phenomenon can be used in the interest of the experiment in order to get a particular type of gene or particular type of genetic variation this is also the callus is also source of a tissue for cell ex suspension culture and in a commercial uh, industries you can see this callus is used for the production of secondary metabolites please let me know if you want a detailed video on application of callus and thank you so much for staying with me till the end and do not forget to subscribe to times of biotech